Hello friends, myself Shipta Shivasto and today we are going to discuss about approaches to teaching and learning. From your experiences of teaching, you know that a class consists of a group of students almost of the same age, controlled by a teacher, accommodated in a specified place, a classroom. Usually a teacher teaches in a classroom a topic from a subject within a fixed period of time. Thus, we can say the classroom teaching consists of three aspects that is student, teacher and subject. The ultimate aim of this teaching learning process is to enable the students to acquire the knowledge and understanding of the concepts taught in the class. You will agree with the fact that every child is different from another, has his own ways of learning. Therefore, to teach a group of children in a classroom is a very challenging task which you might have experienced. No single method of teaching can equally facilitate learning of each and every child in a class. Taking into consideration the diverse ways of learning, a teacher may adopt various approaches to teaching and learning. Some approaches of teaching and learning are as follows such as teacher-centered approach, subject-centered approach, learner-centered approach, competency-based approach. Now let us first discuss about the teacher-centered approach. As the name suggests, this teacher-centered approach, the teacher is the central figure of this approach. He has the full control of the class, dominating all classroom activities, starting from the sitting arrangement in the class, maintaining discipline in the class, deciding what, when and how to teach, asking questions in the class, then deciding what and what, uh, uh, when and what type of examination and evaluation of students has to be taken, everything is decided by the teacher. So, a teacher in the classroom either conducts the activities or directs the students to perform the activities. Now, this approach believes that teacher knows all that a learner is required to know. Now, in this process, teacher transmits bits of knowledge and information to the learner and some so-called good learners recall and memorize those bits of knowledge and reproduce it as and when required. So this whole process is just has two main key processes that is memorizing and recalling from memory. And that's why the famous educational thinker Paulo Freire has termed it as banking education. This banking education denotes the deposition of knowledge and information from the teacher to the learner. Let's illustrate it with the help of an example. Imagine a class of fourth standard where students are sitting in rows according to their height. They are listening to the teacher who is showing a picture of a flower and explaining the function of its different parts. The students are listening silently and taking down notes when the teacher is dictating. When the teacher notices that any student who is not paying attention or talking to another student, she shouts at them. She reminds them, sit silently and listen to me. If any students ask a question in course of teaching, he is asked to wait till the teaching is over. Wait, let me finish first. After the explanation and dictation of notes are over, she spends some time in question and answer activity, she corrects the mistake of the students and praises those who have given correct answer. Now from this illustration, you must have noticed that all the classroom activities are being controlled by the teacher, whether it's the sitting arrangement of the teacher or the teaching or the explanation of the content or the maintaining discipline in the class, asking students from the questions uh, uh, or dictating the notes to the students and doing question answer activities, correcting the mistakes of students, praising them. All of these activities are controlled by the teacher and students are only passive listeners obeying the instructions given by the teacher. Now from this illustration we can illustrate some characteristics of teacher centered approach such as in this approach knowledge is transmitted from the teacher to the student and the main focus of the teacher is on teaching and instruction rather than on learning. The content and methods of teaching are decided by the teacher according to the average learner of the class, which often 
do not cater to the need of individual learners and do not take interest in the classroom. And most often the emphasis is given on passive listening, reading and writing and reproducing whatever is taught by the teacher. There is very little scope for students participation in classroom activities because most of the classroom activities are dictated by the teachers, what they have to do, how they have to do. So there is very little scope for the debate and discussion or the sharing of ideas by the teacher. The teacher is mostly concerned with the completion of the course contents. It hardly matters to them whether the students have understood the topic or not. The classroom management is entirely dependent on teachers experiences and capability. The classroom discipline is also the responsibility of the teacher how to enforce the discipline in the class, how to maintain the discipline in the class, everything is depending on the teacher. The hallmark of the discipline is students absolute obedience of the teacher. Teacher mostly use extrinsic modes of motivation like praise and rebuff, rewards and punishment. These are generally used by the teacher. So these were the characteristics features of the teacher centered approach. This approach as you know is entirely dependent on the teacher. And if a teacher has a positive mind, he can keep up with the spirit of learning new things help and help his students with a vast range of experiences. Now from this point we can see this approach has some utilities also. These utilities include transfer of knowledge, information and skill. Now teacher being a matured and experienced person transfer his, the knowledge he has having, the information and skill he has having to a less matured or less experienced person that is the learner. Learner cannot learn new unfamiliar or abstract concepts on their own. There are so many concepts, the new abstract concepts which learners cannot learn on their own. So number of times teacher has to direct deliver these things that explain these things to the learner. Demonstration of the experiments and activities consisting for materials and instruments. For the young students there are Number of, number of times there are experiments and activities which consist hazardous materials or the instruments which, from which students can harm themselves. So it is always advisable that the teacher should demonstrate those experiments and activities to the learners. And most importantly, the large size classroom when there are large number of students, now there are the limitations also. Apart from these utilities, children tend to lose interest. Now as the teacher tries to transmit the knowledge and some monotonous way of teaching, number of times it happens that children tend to lose their interest in teaching. If the teacher is not capable enough, does not have that competence level, it cannot meet the needs of individual children. It also retards the creativity of the children because everything, whatever the children is doing, whatever the child is performing is on the direction of the teachers. So it hinders the creativity of the children. There is no scope for continuous and comprehensive evaluation because teaching is completely confined to the course material and the uh, not on the understanding. It's just the teacher has to complete the course. It hardly matters to them whether the learner has understood the con concept or not. Because being a large size class, number of times it happens that teacher is unable to pay individual attention to the learners. There is no scope for debate and discussion among the students. Now, this was all about the teacher centered approach. Now the next approach is the subject centered approach. This approach is very much similar to the teacher centered approach. It is very common nowadays. This subject centered approach focuses on the delivery of the subject contents by the teacher for the students to acquire it. It just has importance to lay that on the topics included in the subject around which all the teaching learning activities revolve. Nowadays in most of the schools, there is a strict order to follow whatever is given in the textbook. The teacher has to complete the syllabus from the textbook only whatever questions are given in the textbook, only that, that has to be followed. The textbook in the subject is considered as the storehouse of all the required concepts, examples and exercises. Now this subject centered approach book is considered very important. The textbook becomes an embodiment of syllabus. All that is in it has to be taught. It becomes a methodical guide which has to be read and substantial portion need to be memorized through repeated reading. It also becomes the evaluation system. Number of times 
only the questions given in the end of each chapter which have to be answered by the students either orally or in the written method. It is also possible they, they, that they can reproduce the text directly from the uh, whatever given is given in the textbook. The national curriculum framework has given some comments on the textbook in the context of subject centered approach. It says that textbook is the only source and main source for the teacher. Teacher has to follow whatever word by word, phrase by phrase given in the textbook. The matters are presented before the students by the teacher in the exact manner it has been given in the textbook. Insistence on the students to memorize the facts by repeated reading and questions given at the end of the chapter are to be asked to the students for assessment of learning. Students may write answers orally or in written form by reproducing the exact content copying from the book. Let's try to understand this concept more clearly with the help of an illustration. A language teacher of class 5 used the language textbook as its primary teaching material in the class. He held the textbook in one hand and a piece of chalk in the other. He read out the topic, he used the blackboard as and when required, he explained the main points of the topic and asked questions given at the end of the chapter. When any students asked any question, he advised them to read a related paragraph to find the answer. He never cited any example for easy understanding of the students beyond the textbook. In the examination, most of the students could not answer the comprehension questions as they were not directly from the text. Now if we review this illustration, we found out that the teacher is completely following whatever is given in the textbook. He is writing from the book, whatever main points or the uh, topic is given in the book, he is asking the questions from the book. Even if a student is asking for the answers, he is telling them that go and find the answer in the book, in, uh, read this particular paragraph and you will get the answer. He is citing examples from the book so that is, students will understand. But he is not trying to illustrate the uh, examples or citing the examples outside the book from the, their daily uh, routine life so that students could correlate. No, whatever they are doing, whatever they are processing is just from the book. So it, this process enables the students the, uh, uh, from comprehending the questions that were not directly from the text, that, that were not directly related to the textbook given in their textbook. From this illustration, we can find out that the major characteristics of subject centered approach are the focus is on content or subject matter. Thus, the transaction of the textbooks in the class is be all and end all of the classroom activities given in the textbook. Whatever is given in the textbook is perfect or only that is the desired thing that has to be taken. The teacher projects himself as a model for the students, means he is the one who knows all the things, He's the, he has the mastery over the content matter. The learning needs of the students are supposed to be fulfilled through the textbook, only the bookish knowledge is being provided to the students and it is supposed that all the learning needs of the students could be fulfilled through these textbooks. Now, real life situations are rarely taken into account. As I told you earlier, all the examples were being cited from the textbook only, no external comprehension are being provided. So, all classroom interactions are textbook centered. Whatever activities the students are performing, whatever activities teacher is performing, everything is from the book. So, there is stress on quality oriented output rather than quality. Textual questions are used for evaluations which lacks variety. Questions given in the end of the chapter are only used for the evaluation and students are supposed to write whatever is given in the textbook, whatever matter is given in the textbook, only students are supposed to write that points, just memorize it and write it there. So this approach has very less utilities. This approach provides the learner an exposure to a plenty of content within a limited time and as the course is completed. Within the prescribed time, the learner may plan their practice exercises elaborately and can learn the subject matter thoroughly. So the only utility of this approach is the learner is getting time and 
exposure to the content matter. So whatever content matter is given in the uh, textbook, it has exposure to that. And if the course is completed within the time, the learner may, can have different exercises which are given in the book and can learn the subject matter thoroughly. Now apart from this, it has some limitations also. Now as I told you earlier, whatever knowledge the children is acquiring by this process is only from the book. Only bookish knowledge is getting. So teacher is also following whatever is given in the book, all the activities, whatever is given in the book. So there is no novelty in the teaching learning process. Most of the time is utilized for memorizing and reproducing the content. Nothing is being created. So there no meaningful learning takes place. There is very little scope for developing question skills and not only on the part of learner but also as a part of teacher because teacher also asks questions whatever is given in the textbook. So all the learning activities, all the uh, questions, all the uh, classroom activities, everything is confined to the textbook whatever is given in the uh, textbook whatever is uh, given in the books only that is learner has to do or the teacher has to do and they have to follow the same thing. So evaluation is also limited to the textbook concepts. Questions will be asked from the textbook and students will be also write the answers from the textbook. No assessment of the overall aspects of personality is possible in this approach. Today we have learned about the two approaches. The first one was teacher centered approach in which we saw that the teacher is the central figure of the whole process, teaching learning process. The whole pro uh, activities of teaching learning revolves around the teacher. He maintains all the activities starting from the directing the students, how to sit in the, sit in the class, how to teach, what to teach, when to teach, where to teach and how the uh, learner will proceed. Everything is decided by the teacher. Although this teacher centered approach is feasible in the classes where there are large number of students or where they have to uh, only transfer of knowledge is to take place but otherwise learners do not take interest in this kind of teacher centered approach. The second approach was subject centered approach. This subject centered approach was again it was revolving around the textbooks or the subject matter. In the previous method only teacher was the center and in this method only the subject or the content whatever is given in the textbook was the focus of the approach. Now these both methods look quite similar and in both the methods learners are neglected. Learner who is the prime most aspect of the teaching learning process because whatever activities are being followed is just to give knowledge to the learner. So in both of these processes learner is being completely neglected. So friends that's all for today. We will meet again. Thank you. Have a nice day.